Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here each and every weekend at this time on this station to bring you, the Pennsylvania landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And here it comes. I have not, I do not, and I will not ever, never represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, the Pennsylvania royalty owner, and I am very proud and happy to do so because we need to level this playing field that is very heavily slanted in my opinion and unfortunately is continuing to be that way. So we need to get quality representation to the Pennsylvania landowner to make sure that we're maximizing our situation. And unfortunately, in many, 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 many cases, that's not the case. So we need to change this. We need to flip this and we need to get information. We need to get quality representation and we need to stop having people taken advantage of because they're not informed and they're not receiving proper advice or information, that they're relying on the gas or pipeline company landman who works for the gas or pipeline company. That's where their check comes. They either work directly for them or they work as an independent contractor. You don't pay them. You don't pay them. You can't forget that. And it's I'm already, <laughs> listen, it is driving me crazy, the things that I'm hearing, and we need to stop this and make sure we're getting good quality information out to the people so that you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your property for you and future generations. We need to get this information out there, and that's what we're going to keep doing. And check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com. Check out pipelineattorney.com, whether you're looking for representation or not. If you never call me, that's okay. But keep listening. Keep checking out the radio or the websites because we got to get this information out there. I am seeing my new thing that I'm seeing, I think, a, a trend where gas leases, in my opinion, have actually expired. They have ended, but the landowner has no idea that's the case. Pipeline agreements have expired. The option to exercise or to use the agreement has expired. But the landowner doesn't know this. And then they receive a check and they don't say anything. And here they are operating potentially for the next century or longer in an inferior agreement that they could have done much better. We have to change this. We have to make sure that people are not being taken advantage of because let me make this very, 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 very clear. In my opinion, it's occurring virtually every single day. And it's not one person, it's a whole bunch of people. And we need to stop it. We need to stop just listening to the dialogue and the narrative by the pipeline and gas company landmen and representatives. We need to understand this from our side from the side of the landowner, from the side of the royalty owner. We need to do this. And I promise you this, I am going to keep working and keep fighting to get this information out there to make sure that we're raising the bar for everyone in Pennsylvania. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can contact the office for representation anytime, 570-307-307. 0702. Regardless of your location, as long as the gas rights or property is in Pennsylvania, give the office a call and see if we can help you. I'm going to say real quick a couple things. Again, I only represent landowners, gas right owners, gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews, consultations, pipeline, water line agreements, any and all contracts related to natural gas development, surface issues, you name it, we do it. Royalty issues, unitization issues, listen, amendments, <laughs> amendments, modifications, and ratifications. If you receive an amendment, modification, ratification, any of those three buzzwords are in a document provided to you by the gas or pipeline company. You, in my opinion, need to take that to a lawyer. 
you can call me. I'd love to talk to you, evaluate it, and explain it to you. We do reviews and consultations and then decide, is there anything else, anything else that needs to be done? Again, reviews and consultations, I do them by telephone all the time. We can do them in my office. You're more than welcome to come. A lot of clients are in western Pennsylvania, southwestern Pennsylvania, north central Pennsylvania, so we do these by phone, but get something done. Have a review and consultation. I have been reviewing amendments, modifications, and ratifications that are presented to people that I believe have been presented because the actual underlying gas lease or pipeline agreement, but usually gas lease, has actually terminated. And when you sign a ratification, you're saying, no, my lease is in full effect and there's no issues with my lease whatsoever. If you have that document, my opinion, it very well may be a trap. Again, it very well may be a trap where you shouldn't be following falling for it. Imagine this. You have 100 acres. Your lease may have terminated. The market in your area may be $3,000, $4,000 an acre. And you sign an amendment and ratification, and you've just ratified a lease that may have or is terminated, depending on the scenario. Say We'll say it's terminated. But... You've ratified it, and now you got a problem. Well, you don't even know you have a problem because you're just signing whatever they put in front of you. And now you've revived or kept alive a lease of 12.5% full deductions, and you get no other bonus money. Or you do a review and consultation that turns out, hey, there's a problem here. The reason why they're doing this is because it looks like your lease terminated. And then you say, wow, okay, what can we do? And you may be able to negotiate an entirely new lease. If you're, you have 100 acres and you get a new lease, at, you know, pick a number. $1,000 an acre, that's $100,000 you just received. $4,000 an acre, that's $400,000 you just received. Or, again, you can just continue to sign blindly documents, which we need to stop doing. We need to stop blindly signing major contracts for industrial and commercial operations on your property, which many times well, uh, virtually all times, are heavily, heavily, heavily slanted to the company's benefit. And virtually all of them can be negotiated and changed to move it more towards your benefit. And depending upon leverage, and I'll tell you, leverage assessment is key. And a company land man is not going to tell you what your leverage is. Why would they? That They don't work for you. They work for the company. We need to assess your leverage and make sure that you're maximizing your leverage and, quite frankly, that you're not being taken advantage of. You don't want to be taken advantage of. And this isn't being taken advantage of that you bought a car for an extra $300 than what it should have cost. No, this is taken advantage of at times into the millions of dollars, many, 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 many times into the millions of dollars over the course of a lease. Many, 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 many times, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you sign a lease at a below market price and that lease survives for the next 50 or 100 years, you now have reduced your royalty under that lease for the lifetime of the lease. And if you have 100 acres, you have a couple hundred acres, that can easily go into the millions of dollars depending upon where you are and the type of activity and production in that area. This is real. This is true. This is not made up. And unfortunately, it's occurring all the time. All the time. And we have to stop it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. If you have an amendment, ratification, modification, or frankly, any other oil and gas issue, give us a call. See if we can help you. 570-307-0702. And make sure you keep tuning in to this show, All Things Marcellus, with me, Attorney Doug Clark, each and every week at this time on this station, because we're going to keep giving you the information that you need. Now, I'm going to talk about pipeline right-of-way option agreements here today. And I'm going to talk in particular about a company called HEP Tioga Gathering LLC. Some people in the community call them Howard or Howard Energy that may be a name that you might be more familiar with, but the actual company, what I want to talk about here, their official title is HEP Tioga Gathering LLC. Now, let me say, 
again, as always, when I pick my subjects and I want to talk about things, it's usually because it's something that's hot, pressing, comes up a lot during the last couple of weeks, last month, and we want to get out there and get this information. But we also, I also look for topics that are not just limited. As you can hear, this is HEP Tioga County, that is, gathering. So this is super relevant to Tioga County. However, the same principles apply regardless of your location. We're talking about option agreements. What is an option agreement? An option agreement means this, that you enter into an agreement with a company for a pipeline that may be placed or pipelines on your property. You give the company a period of time. This is called the option period. You give them a period of time to decide whether they're actually going to use the pipeline rights and install a pipeline. So that period of time may be two years. And so you say, okay, company, I'm going to sign an agreement to give you the option that within two years, you have to decide whether you're going to use this agreement or not. And normally, how does the money go? Here's how it typically works. You as a landowner would receive an upfront payment, which is not typically a very substantial payment, but it could be into the thousands of dollars, and we always negotiate for as high as we can get. But you get an upfront payment, and that payment is what they buy, or what, when they make that payment, what they buy there is, we'll say, a two-year window or option period to decide if they're going to use that agreement. Then if they use the agreement, then they're going to have to pay you a much more substantial payment, which is usually based upon the length of the pipeline or the length of the easement that's going to be used on the property. So you would have two periods of time. You have your upfront option period. We're going to say it's two years in this case. And you're paid a sum of money for the company to have that option. Then if the company, what's called, exercises the option, then they're going to make another payment to you. Let's say it's $30 a foot for the easement. They're going to make that more substantial payment, and then they're going to go ahead and put the pipeline in the ground. Now, if after two years they decide, well, you know what? We don't want to use this agreement. We're going to use another agreement, or we're not going to install the pipeline at this location for whatever reason. Then the landowner does not get a second payment. So it's important that we negotiate as high as we can for the upfront payment. Of course, we want to negotiate for the highest back end payment, but we need to understand how this works and we need to make sure that we're not signing bad option agreements or, of course, bad pipeline right of way agreements. I'll just say briefly as we go into the break that I think personally, myself, my own personal opinion, $15, $16, $17 a foot, my personal opinion is atrocious. That's my personal opinion. I represent landowners all across Pennsylvania for pipeline right-of-way agreements. At this point, I've reviewed, consulted, and negotiated on over 70 or well, hundreds of pipeline agreements with over 70 different companies, which gives you, again, the idea of the experience that's out there. What information that I have and the base of information which I'm talking to you from today, and then also what we use when we evaluate or what I use when I evaluate and I do reviews and consultations, negotiations, leverage assessment, all of those things are based upon very substantial experience. And I'm going to tell you this, that I'm a heck of a lot more informed now and I'm a heck of a lot better today than I was when I did my first pipeline right-of-way agreement on behalf of my first client for a pipeline right-of-way agreement because I didn't have the breadth of experience that I do now. So think about that when you, now I did hundreds of gas leases before that and I was doing oil and gas work before I did my first pipeline um, negotiation and the agreement. So think about that. When you may not have ever done a pipeline right-of-way agreement or engaged in these negotiations, just remember, you're up against somebody that has a heck of a lot more experience, that knows what to say to you, that has the job of trying to get you to sign. And you got to remember, this isn't something that you do all the time, and maybe you need some assistance. And I'm going to tell you, if you're signing a pipeline right-of-way agreement without a lawyer's assistance, without at least a review and consultation, I truly believe on everything that that is an incredible mistake that you're making, an incredible mistake. I have seen, 
I can't tell you how many times, and I mean, I don't know if I want to say 50 plus, 100 plus, but a whole lot of times where an offer was made and the client, after we did our review, consultation, representation, literally made tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of more dollars as a result of understanding their rights. And the worst thing that happens, the worst thing that happens on the flip side is you spend an hour or two of review and consultation and you decide, okay, well, all right, I'm good with what I have and I'm going to do this. That's the worst thing that happens. The best thing, you either decline a pipeline right away agreement you didn't want or you make your agreement stronger by adding a better language, additional language, you understand your assessment, or you <laughs> make your language stronger and you get more money and sometimes significantly more money. They do not want to tell you what your leverage is. Again, they do not want you to know what your negotiation leverage is. And I assure you, it can be very complicated to assess your leverage. If you're experienced and you do it all the time, it's much simpler. But it is complicated, and they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know, and you need to know. We get back after the break. I'm going to talk about pipeline right away option agreements, and I don't care where you are. You want to pay attention to this. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station Give me a call, any natural gas issue, see if we can help you, 570-307-0702. And please pay close attention to this very important message. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus because we're going to keep bringing you the information that you need regarding oil and gas development. All right, I'm going to jump into this because I do have a lot to cover and this stuff is important. Pipeline right-of-way option agreements can be done in many, many different ways. And you, again, if you're signing a pipeline agreement, pipeline right-of-way option agreement, and you're not represented, you haven't had it reviewed, and you haven't done a consultation with an attorney, I am going to tell you that I think that you're making an enormous mistake. I don't know. I can't think of a case where we weren't able to improve and typically significantly improve pipeline right-of-way agreements. And many, many times we've been able to obtain tens of thousands and even, and this is no exaggeration, many times hundreds of thousands of dollars in additional compensation to what's offered. But you're not going to know what may be available if you are relying on the gas company or pipeline company employee or landman. You need to get your own assistance. And I love what I do, and I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to help you. But if you don't call me, please call someone else who knows what they're doing, who is going to work for you and protect your rights, assess your leverage, and make sure that you're protected and maximizing your situation. Don't fall for, oh, well, you know, royalties where the big money is, you know, here, hurry up, sign, sign, sign here, big money, shiny, flashy object over there. No, these pipelines are permanent. I deal today with pipeline agreements that were signed in the 1950s when people call me to complain, how are these companies coming back and they want to put in this pipeline and they want to put in this above ground valve, they want to do this and they want to do that. How can they do this? How can they do this? Well, in many cases they can do it because in 1950 the owner of the property signed a garbage pipeline agreement that gives you essentially no rights. And what's happening today, in my opinion, Many, many people are signing garbage pipeline agreements that gives the company incredible rights that they have no idea about. All you hear is, oh, yeah, we're going to put a pipeline in and we're going to run gas to market and we're going to make you rich. Well, you cannot focus solely on that. That can be a factor. That is something, look, we want to make sure that you're doing the best you can. So that can be a factor, but that is not our focus. Our focus is on maximizing your individual circumstance. And in order to do that, should you be relying on the party that's trying to obtain your signature? Think about that. Please think about that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So, okay. 
company has an option, a two year option. Well, in order to say to you as a landowner, hey, we're going to use our option. There's a process that's called exercising the option. When you tell the person, hey, we're going to use this. And in order to exercise an option, you need to, you'll have, there'll be rules written in the document, what has to occur. And sometimes it's just write a letter. Sometimes it's send a check. It depends. You have to look in your documents. And again, this is all something that could be negotiated. So I want to go back and I want to talk about that HEP Tioga gathering agreement. Again, many people refer to them as Howard Energy or Howard, but it's HEP Tioga gathering LLC. And they present to landowners what I, Doug Clark, my opinion, is a horrific option agreement. That's right. I think it's horrific. It's terrible. Here's just the beginning part, which I find just astonishing that any person would actually read this and understand this process who would sign this document. In paragraph one, under uh, it says grant of the exclusive option. Here are the words. Owner, which is you, landowner, hereby unconditionally and irrevocably grants, bargains, sells, and conveys to HEP the exclusive right and option, called the option, to purchase from owner an easement on the property in accordance with and pursuant to the terms and conditions of a right-of-way grant and addendum, called the easement to be entered into by the parties to be entered into meaning that you're signing an option agreement agreeing that you're subsequently in the future going to enter into a pipeline easement agreement it goes on though and says that this easement that you would enter into the future shall contain provisions substantially the same as those set forth in Exhibit B. Exhibit B to this document is a pipeline right-of-way agreement. So they're saying, you're going to see a pipeline right-of-way agreement today, and we're going to attach it as an exhibit to this option agreement that we're presenting to you. So we have two documents. You have an option agreement, which I'm reading from, then you have a pipeline right-of-way agreement that's attached. So what they're saying is, when you sign this option agreement, you're agreeing that in the future, if the company exercises this option agreement, that you're going to enter into a new easement agreement, new documents. Again, new documents. It says right here that the easement shall contain, meaning the new documents, to be entered into by the party, the easement shall contain provisions substantially the same as in Exhibit B. So they can change. They can change. They can change what you're agreeing to when you sign the option agreement. In the future, they have to give you a new agreement. They have to give you a new easement agreement. It says right here, to be entered into by the parties, meaning you're not doing it today, you're doing it in the future. And when you do it in the future, it says right here that the future agreement that you're to sign shall contain provisions substantially the same. Not the same, substantially the same. Well, what the heck does that mean? Substantially the same as those set forth in Exhibit B, which again is a sample right-of-way agreement. And other, here it goes on though. Please listen to this. This is to me fascinating and other such customary terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by HEP. My opinion then, you're agreeing that you're going to sign an easement in the future, which you have yet to see, but it will be substantially similar to the document that you have seen, but, but you're agreeing that the company can add other customary terms and conditions that are reasonably requested by the company. And I'll tell you this, if you know what they are, call me 570-307-0702 because I don't. And I do this every day and I don't. And I sure as heck can't fathom a situation where I would agree to enter in, in anything in my life, to enter into an option agreement where the company is going to present me a new easement agreement in the future 
and then they can it can be different than what I've seen already, and they can add other terms. How can anybody reasonably and rationally justify entering into this type of an agreement? And here's the thing. You don't have to. You don't have to enter into an option agreement. You don't have to. And I'm going to tell you this. Not one single client of mine has ever, in or ever entered into this option agreement. Never. Never have, never will. I will not represent a person who will sign this agreement. I will very politely say, look, I'm not comfortable having a client sign this agreement because, quite frankly, I don't want to be associated with it because it's that bad in my personal opinion. Now, look, people may disagree, but this is my opinion. And this is what I believe. And I represent people again every single day and have done consultations, reviews, negotiations, representation on pipeline agreements with over 70 different companies. And I've never seen this before, ever. And we know what's happening. People are still signing it. People are still signing this document. And we need, in my opinion, to stop that. You can sign agreements, but let's make them fair, just, proper as equal as we can, but they're not, you know, this whole thing, well, yeah, you know, we would just want to get your gas to market. We're your friend. We're your friend. We're your friend. Wait until you see if you have a problem and see if they're your friend. Just wait and see. Maybe they are, you know, just wait and see. Again, these are all my opinions. You know, you may have a different opinion. Other people may have different opinions, but I'll tell you, I'm very, very convinced and firm in my opinions. And this is, I am attorney Doug Clark, and you're listening to all things Marcellus. You have a pipeline right away, option agreement, pipeline agreement, anything related to natural gas. I'd love to hear from you, see if we can help you. And if we can, great. If we're not right for you, that's okay. But get someone that can help you. You can call us 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. This is what I do. Everything is done by me. Our review and consultation, representation, negotiation, whatever it is, is done by me, not an associate, but done by me, and I want to help people. It's what I do, and it's what I love doing. I'm going to get into this next section, and I'll tell you what. Please stay with me. If you're, in ty if you're at all dealing with Howard or HEP in these pipeline agreements, you're not going to want to miss the next section because I thoroughly believe that HEP has failed to properly exercise many, many of these option agreements, which in my opinion, if I am correct, these agreements that they failed to exercise properly have terminated. But when you take the payment and you sign off on future documents, you have no idea that you may have just given life to an agreement that terminated, which would have maybe had an incredible opportunity for you to either negotiate a new agreement or simply say no, no. And we're going to talk about that. And I'm telling you, it's interesting stuff. And if you're out there at Tioga County, stay tuned because we're going to dive into what needs to be done to exercise the options and think about was that done in your case? And I think there's a really good chance it wasn't. I'll explain it all when I get back. Again, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can contact me at 570-307-0702. See if we can help you. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can always contact us, learn about representation, reviews, consultations, royalty issues, you name it. 570-307-0702. All right, I want to jump into this because I got a lot to cover. And I'll tell you, this thing has me fired up too. So again, quick reset. You enter into an option agreement with a pipeline company, and we're saying it's a two-year option agreement. That pipeline company has two years to decide, are they going to exercise the option and then go ahead and use the agreement or are they going to decline to exercise the option and let it die in option agreements there will be language stating what the company must do in order to exercise or maybe accept whatever language we want to use but the legal term would be to exercise the option so sometimes again it's just sending a letter sending a letter and a check it depends on what the document says. But the company is obligated 
Again, the company is obligated if they are going to exercise the option to meet their requirements. And sometimes these requirements are very specific. In this case, talking about the HEP, Tioga Gathering LLC option, there is a specific set of requirements that the company must meet in order to exercise their option. And I want to stress that the company themselves created these requirements, not you, not me, but the company themselves put in their option agreement. Here is what we must do to exercise this option, to accept this option and use the agreement. So they draft the document, they give it to you, and in there it says, here's what we must do in order to exercise the option and then use the pipeline right of way agreement. This is critical. It is their requirements. Whatever we do in this world, we don't need to feel bad for any company out there. This is their requirements drafted by Assume, super smart lawyers, and here we go. So what must they do to exercise the option? And guys, Tioga County, Howard Energy, whether they've exercised it or you have one coming up, pay attention to this and see if they did this. Here we go. Under the option agreement, HEP shall have the right but not the obligation at its sole discretion to exercise the option at any point during the option term. And that, again, is a two-year term in this case. In the event HEP elects to exercise the option, meaning if they want to go ahead and do this, here's what they have to do. HEP shall, shall is an important term because that's a mandatory term. is isn't like should or may. It says HEP shall give written notice, which is called the option notice, to the owner, which is the landowner. So they have to write to you, number one, and that notice has to, and then there's several more things that has to occur. Subsection I says the notice which specifies that HEP has chosen to exercise the option. So that's just in the letter. Hey, we've uh, decided that we're going to exercise the option. That's real easy to meet. Next requirement. They have to, in this option notice, this written option notice. Now pay attention, please, because I'll bet this didn't probably occur in your case if you've had your option exercised by HEP. Number two, or at least attempted to be exercised. Num the next requirement, number three actually, attaches, so the written notice has to attach a copy of the easement to be executed by the owner. Okay, remember when I read earlier, this agreement says you sign an option agreement today and then in the future, we're going to provide you with a pipeline easement an easement agreement, which we're going to have you sign. And that agreement should, has to be substantially the same as what you've already looked at, but it could contain other terms, which is highly problematic, but we won't go there right now. Okay. So again, let me reset. So they have to write you a written notice, the option notice that says they're electing to exercise the option. And then they have to attach a copy of this new easement agreement attach a copy so in that letter you get from the company their requirement says that they shall attach a copy of the easement which is the new pipeline right-of-way document to be executed by you the landowner this agreement again oh gosh does this kill me which this agreement which will contain terms substantially similar to those contained in exhibit B, which is a pipeline right of way agreement that's attached to the option, but it's not the actual agreement because remember it says they have to send you a, attach a new easement that's going to be substantially similar to the one that you've seen that's attached as an exhibit to this option agreement. So I know this gets confusing. But this is really, really important, and you need to understand this. 
So they have to write to you. They have to say they've chosen to exercise the option. And it mandates that they have to then provide you in that letter a copy of this new easement document that you are then to execute. Okay. And then it's going to say, or it goes on to say, excuse me, that this written notice has to specify the date by which the new easement agreement that you're about to sign that you've now just received is to be executed by you and returned to HEP. So again, you have to get a written notice saying we're exercising the option. It has to enclose a new pipeline easement agreement, a new document, and they have to tell you the date by which this new document you have is to be signed by you. So it may say, okay, here is the new easement for you to sign. You have to sign this and return it to us. So, and there'll be a date there. So they have to do this. These are their requirements. I can't say that enough. They set these requirements. These are mandatory requirements that they set. They should be held to meet them. They must be held to meet them. So they attach the new easement agreements. Then they specify the date in which the, this new easement agreement is to be signed by you and returned to HEP, which now listen, this is super important, which shall also be the date on which the easement, which is the new easement agreement shall become effective. So they have to send you a new easement agreement. Again, they have to notify you in writing. Hey, we're exercising the option. Here's the new easement documents. Return them to us and within, and we'll say within 30 days. And that's the date. That's the date that the new agreement becomes effective. That's the triggering date of the new agreement. That is critical. That's an important date. Now you actually have a pipeline easement agreement effective as of that date goes on the date that you return it back to the company has to be at least 30 days after you received it so what you're going to see is is what should be done what is mandated what is required required to be done you get a new easement document and the company says sign this new easement document send it back to us on within say 35 days or send us back to us in 40 days whatever that is they just can't send it to you and say sign it and return it within 30 days it has to be at least 30 days so then it goes on it says that following the receipt of the option notice which is again all this information the owner shall execute two counterparts of the easement meaning essentially two easement agreements if requested by HEP and a memorandum in a form reasonably acceptable and provided by HEP as a quick side note if they're providing it to you I hope it's acceptable to them okay from there you send all this information excuse me information back and then it says HEP shall then execute such counterparts, meaning the agreements that you signed, and return one copy of each fully executed document to the owner. Remember, these are new documents we're talking about. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. I'm going to summarize this now. And please... I'd love to hear from you if you have a Howard Energy Option Agreement that they've exercised or attempted to exercise because I believe they've not met their requirements and I don't know how many, but I've yet to see one that they actually have met their requirements. They very well may have, but I've yet to see one. And that's pretty darned important to you if you have a pipeline option agreement with HEP. So let me summarize this again and I want to highlight a few things. Remember, they drafted these documents and presented them to you. They set forth the exact, and I stress, mandatory requirements that must occur for them to exercise the option. This is their work. This is what they said they must do. And the question is, are they doing it? And I don't think so. And this is a big, big deal, big deal. So 
what must they do? They have two years in this case to write to you, the landowner, and give you written notice called the option notice that they are going to exercise their rights and use this option. In this written notice, and remember, this is mandatory, they have to, have to mandatorily, they have to supply new easement documents, a new easement agreement, which must contain terms substantially similar than what the than what are in the exhibit to the option agreement. But the key part is here that they have to provide you a new easement document that you have yet to see or sign. They have to provide that to you. Think about it. Did they do that? They have to provide that to you. And it's important because it goes on to state that when they provide you the written notice that they're going to use the agreement, when they provide you the new easement documents, new, not your old ones, new, when they provide you these new easement documents, they state that they must specify the date by which you are to sign this new easement documents and return it back to them. They will tell, they'll send you new documents and say, okay, here are the new documents, return them to us, let's say in 45 days. And that's really, really important because that date is the effective date of the agreement. You don't have an agreement, in my opinion, and I mean this firmly, you do not have an agreement unless you have received, okay, unless you've received these new easement documents, you sign it and return it to the company. That's when that new agreement, when your pipeline right of way agreement becomes effective. Remember, all you signed previously was an option agreement. You didn't sign an actual pipeline right of way agreement. You signed an option agreement that said you have two years to decide. And if you do decide you want to use it, then what you are required to do is to send me this written notice to tell me that you're going to use the option agreement and close the new actual easement agreement, the actual pipeline agreement, which I am going to sign and have to return to you. And when I return it to you on that date that you provide, that is the date that we actually have a contract. That is the effective date of the contract. And it goes so far to say we as a company have to send you two copies so you can sign them both you send them back to us, we will sign them, and we will send you back a copy of what we signed. Again, please remember this. Go back. Go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, and replay this radio show. Look at paragraph four of your option agreement. Look at this. Did they meet these terms? This is a big deal because, in my opinion, they don't meet these terms. You don't have an agreement. So, they have to send you these new easement documents, which you sign and return to them, which they then sign and return to you. Did they do that in your case? Think about it. And if they didn't, I'd love to hear from you. And here's the other thing, and I'm going to talk more about this in the last section. Watch out because they're going to hurry up and try to send you a check and then claim that, well, you cashed a the check, therefore you agreed. By cashing the check, you agreed. So, that happens all the time. The first thing is that they're going to argue is, well, you cashed the check, so therefore you've agreed. Well, we'll talk about that if we talk. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. If you have this situation, any situation, uh, oil and gas related, give us a call. I really, I want to help you. We want to help everybody we can. If we're right for you, if we're not, that's okay, but we really want to work for you. 570 307 0702. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can call anytime the office, learn about representation, reviews, consultation, these easement issues, any and all gas related issues, royalty issues, breach of contract issues. Give us a call 570 570- 3070702. Make sure you join us each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark, and visit the websites pagasleaseattorney.com, 
pipelineattorney.com. Today's show will be up tomorrow morning. You can check it out anytime during the week. And if you miss any shows, go to the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Check them out at your leisure. There are hours and hours of radio shows on all different topics. So make sure you check them out. I want to make sure we're getting this information to you. So use these as resources. Remember, radio shows are my opinions, not specific advice for anyone, and that's important. My specific advice is get specific advice for you and your situation. So all right, I want to summarize again. HEP, Tioga Gathering LLC, in order, and this is for Tioga County people or anyone with an HEP right-of-way agreement. Their express requirements, and this is a summary, of what the company must do that's mandated by them and documents they gave you is the following. Again, this is a summary. They have to give you written notice that they are going to exercise the option. They must also, and this is important, if this didn't happen, I'd love to hear from you. They must, number two, attach a copy of a new easement document. When they send this letter to you, by their own mandatory requirements, they must attach a copy of a new easement document for you to sign. I can't stress enough, this is a new document because all, all so far you have signed is an option agreement. You haven't signed the pipeline right-of-way agreement. They have to send you that pipeline right-of-way or what they call easement agreement. They have to. Their own requirements that they wrote down say we must send you two separate easement agreements, two, a copy, like two versions of this document, which you have to then sign both of them, return them to the company. This will be the first time that you've actually signed an easement agreement because so far you've only signed the option agreement. So they have to send you new documents that you sign, return to the company, and that they mandate that they must sign a copy of one of those two and return it to you. These are their mandatory requirements. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know that they've ever met these. Now, they may have, but I haven't seen them meet these requirements yet. That's a big deal, a real big deal. Because in my opinion, if you, well, if you do not meet your requirements, you no longer have an agreement. And in my opinion, them simply sending you a letter saying, oh, hey, we are exercising the option, that doesn't comply with this. And I would strongly argue, and I believe strongly, there's no longer a pipeline right-of-way agreement. But the companies have a second layer of defense that they'd like to use and which can create a problem. And that is what they do is they say, okay, here's a letter. We're going to go ahead and we're going to exercise this. And then what do they do? They send you the check, the shiny object, and they hope that you cash it. And then if you cash it and then you come back now and you learn, oh, wait, wait a second. They never actually did what they're supposed to do. And I don't have an agreement. The first thing the company is going to do is say, well, you cashed the check or because you got a check and you cashed it. You don't look at this anymore. You think, oh, okay, everything went to plan. No. What probably happened, probably, my opinion, sample situation. By the way, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call me. Learn about representation, 570-307-0702. And join me each and every week at this time on this station for our radio show, All Things Marcellus. So what typically happens here is, again, my opinion. Landowner who's uninformed a couple years ago signs what I think is a terrible, terrible, terrible option agreement. That option agreement has an exhibit, which is a pipeline agreement, which the landowner didn't sign most likely, almost certainly. Then what happens is the landowner probably didn't understand their negotiation leverage and didn't negotiate and get a very strong addendum. Now, they may have an addendum to their agreement and be happy and think, oh, hey, I got an addendum. That's great. But just because you have an addendum doesn't mean you have a good addendum. So you probably, if you did it by yourself or even did it with an uninformed counsel, you probably didn't do as good as you could have done. If you would have been informed and you would have been represented. So here you are two years later and the company just sends you a letter. And then shortly after they send you a check. Well, what the company did there was most likely fail to meet their obligations under their option agreement. And my opinion, most likely, you do not have an actual pipeline right-of-way agreement. But you got to do something about it. 
what's happening, I think, is landowners are getting these checks, not understanding that the company didn't do what they were supposed to do, which are mandatory and I believe certainly material requirements because you've never signed an easement agreement yet. You've only signed an option agreement. So the company has failed to meet their requirements and you probably, in my opinion, again, do not have an agreement. But you go and cast a check, put everything away, and you say, okay, everything is fine. Well, you could have potentially got out from underneath a very bad pipeline right away agreement. Again, it's my opinion. You have the potential to negotiate for more money or a better agreement or simply say, hey, no, I'm wiser now. And I understand that I didn't need to do this. And you know what? I don't think it's in my best interest to move forward under this agreement. So you got to be careful because, again, I'm not saying cash in the check is the end of this. But if you're listening and you have received the check and it's not cashed, <laughs> Uh, I would suggest that you consider contacting me or somebody else before you cash the check. Again, not specific advice, but I think this makes a lot of sense. Also, if you cash the check, I still will be interested in hearing from you if you give us a call, 570-307-0702. I'm going to say, don't wait. Time is not our friend on this issue. We need to act quickly. But I'm very interested in hearing from people who had these HEP Tioga Gathering LLC option agreements and the company didn't exercise them properly because I believe that there's a strong chance you do not have an agreement. And that's really darn important. Remember, they set the terms. They set the conditions. They drafted these documents. They expect you to comply with them. And I'm going to tell you what. I expect you to comply with them, but I also expect the company to comply with them, as should you. And this may be an incredible opportunity to say, hey, look, no, I'm going to stand up for myself here. You're not going to roll over me. And no, you didn't meet your requirements. You don't have an agreement. You either need to renegotiate with me or you don't have an agreement. And you need to take advantage of that, in my opinion. You can call us. I'd love to hear from you at 570 307 0702. I am already working on a couple of cases with this issue. And I'll tell you, now it may have happened. Maybe I just have only seen ones where the company didn't exercise the option appropriately, but I don't know if they've ever done it the right way. And that's a really big deal. And if you are in that situation, love to hear from you again. 570-307-0702. I just want to point out another thing here. It goes on to state that if this agreement terminates, and I believe it would terminate because they failed to properly notify you and send you new easement documents and the items we've talked about, well, then the company has to, on your written request, execute or and deliver a recordable release of this option agreement. So that means that this agreement ends. This agreement ends. And it says that if they fail to exercise their option within the option term, then the option agreement and their rights shall automatically and immediately terminate without notice or liability whatsoever to you, the owner, or to the company. So those are all super important things. Again, I want to hear from you in this, but I want to, I want to finish up with one last quick little thing, and this is to Tioga County. If you, and there's many of you out there, have been held by a vertical well by Sweppy, Sweppy, you're in Tioga County, and the company has only drilled a vertical well. They've shut that well in. You've never seen any royalties, and it's been, say, five years or more. I want to hear from you, 570-307-0702. We're very actively looking into this issue very aggressively. If you're held by a vertical well, not seeing royalties, and this is occurring year after year, and you're only getting shut-in payments, give us a call. I want to hear from you. I want to review your situation, 570-307-0702. Okay, that's it. Remember... The land man works for the company, not you, the landowner. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. Have a great week, everyone.